Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now at the top of your screen we have the new 6GB RTX 3050. Not only does it have less RAM than the original card, but it has a smaller 96-bit bus width, lower clock speeds and less cores. It also has a lower TDP of 70 watts and gets all its power from the PCIe slot. We tested its gaming capabilities the other day, but in this video I want to compare it to the superior, albeit more power hungry, original 3050 from 2022. Here in the UK there isn't a massive difference between 6 and 8 gigabyte 3050s price wise and that difference becomes minimal if you don't mind shopping around on the used market. So unless you need a 3050 without a power connector, be it low profile or full height, it doesn't make that much sense at what seems to be its 160 to 190 pounds price point depending on the model. Alternatively I'd write both of these off and get an AMD RX 6600 instead but that's a comparison for another day. With that said, let's see how the old compares to the new and unimproved. First up we have Baldur's Gate 3. All of today's games were played at 1080p, the resolution best suited to both versions of this modern entry level card. The 6GB 3050 fell just short of 60fps with the high preset here, whereas the 8GB model handled it just fine with over 70fps. We saw 15 frames per second more on average with the older card, with some hefty improvements to the percentile lows as well, which meant a far more consistent experience for the GPU from 2022. This doesn't make the 6GB 3050 bad, it just needs to be cheaper. I think £139 makes more sense. Some of you said even lower in the previous video. Cyberpunk 2077 with the high preset next, albeit with FSR turned off. This will turn on automatically with this preset, but I disabled it for today's side-by-side -side comparison. The 8GB 3050 performed with 13fps more on average than 2024 6GB card, but remember, it does use more power. That's not all that concerning to me because it's not like it's a thirsty beast or anything like that. It's just that I don't really have much else positive to say about the 6GB 3050's existence. It's no wonder getting a review sample was impossible. I had to spend my own hard earned cash on this thing. <laughs> Fallout 4 up next, and I've included this because it's resurgence in popularity thanks to the TV show. This is best left at a capped frame rate because if the frame rate gets too high, then the game speeds up. You can probably pick that up in this footage. It's 118 FPS for the 6GB card and 145 for the older 8GB card. Forza Horizon 5 next with the Ultra preset and TAA which will run at over 60fps on both cards. Now that said there will be more drops below this with the 2024 6GB 3050 but all in all both of these delivered what I'd call a decent gaming experience. The higher we push the settings, the more the card with reduced VRAM will suffer, but to be fair, we do have to manage our expectations a bit with both. I can certainly see the 6GB card making its way into a lot of new pre-builds, and that's fine as long as sellers are clear about the specs. Red Dead Redemption 2 is running with the Xbox One equivalent graphics here, of course with 1080p resolution instead of 4K. We're using a mixture of visual options Options that balance performance and graphical fidelity nicely, and once again both 3050s can handle at least 60fps. It is of course however another win for the 8GB card as expected, which continues to surprise me sometimes. Palette sent me this one a while ago, and I really like it. It's one of the smaller models and is also ideal for slightly more compact systems, albeit ones with a spare power connector of course. Starfield up next, a very demanding title, especially for modern entry level GPUs. Sticking with the low settings made the most sense here, especially for the sake of the 6GB 3050 which exhibited frame drops to the mid 30s. Upscaling would work wonders here, but I left it switched off for the sake of these side by side comparisons as I always do, just to give you a better idea of raw performance at native resolution. There was less than 10 FPS difference on average, but that's quite significant in a game like Starfield which is harder to run and sits close closer to that 30fps threshold. It feels as though every frame matters even more here. The game was actually pretty consistent on both GPUs, so that's something, and it wasn't unplayable by any means in my opinion, with the new and unimproved 3050. 
Last but not least, it's the Witcher 3, updated with the next-gen patch. The average was up by 20 FPS with the older card, though the percentile lows weren't hugely dissimilar. I do wonder how things would differ if it was just the VRAM amount that was altered. I imagine the results would be a lot closer. Now I think as far as this result goes, performance was decent for both. As I said before, the 6 gig 3050 isn't bad, the price is just a bit high right now, and it should maybe have a different name. 3040 sounds perfectly fine to me. To conclude, this isn't the first example of a cut down product that shares its name with something superior, cough cough. GTX 1060. I do wonder how the reduced VRAM will impact things going forward, whether it'll age a lot worse than the 8GB card. Actually, what am I saying? Of course it will. It already performs worse. I hope that this video has been interesting and I hope that it's helpful. If you've stumbled upon this because you're thinking of buying a 3050 and weren't sure which model to opt for, then this should give you some idea of what to expect. I don't want to put you off the 6GB model completely because it isn't bad by any means, it's just a lot more niche than the older 8GB release I think, and it needs to be cheaper. Maybe it already is by the time you see this video. I can also picture the 8GB 3050 disappearing from the market and then when you search for one of these cards all you'll find is the 6GB model, so that could be problematic as well. But you know, just look out for a used 8GB 3050 if that's the case and you stumble upon this video in a few months time. But there we go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.